Welcome to the Elevate podcast, brought to you by the Registered Master Builders. Each week we explore the ideas and practices that help us get the best from our businesses, our teams, and ourselves. I'm your host, Ryan Castle. We talk to experts, advocates, and business owners in the construction industry to share their knowledge, insights, and experiences to help you build a better business and enjoy a better life. Now let the business building begin. Glenn Duncan, General Manager of the Builders Academy. Welcome along to the Master Builders Elevate podcast. Great to have you on the show today. Yeah, thank you, Ryan. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to a, a good chat. Indeed. And look, a new collaboration between Master Builders and the Builders Academy. Could you maybe start off by telling us how that collaboration came about? Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a long-winded story, but I can give a, a, a bit of a description of how we arrived to where we're at. The, the main reason, as per Master Builders' press release, was is around providing choice in the industry for training partners. Um, the government around five years ago, the Labor government, put in place a reform of vocational education or ROVE, as it was known, leading leading to the formation of the New Zealand Institute of Skills and Technology, which is trading as Tapukinga, or as the press like to put it, the, the mega polytech. So there was a lot of work done in the formation of that. Overall, Tapukinga would have had around a quarter of a million uh, learners, 10,000 staff, and a number of campuses around the, the country. About 60% of those learners would have been work-based learners and about 40% campus-based learners or the old polytech system. And the formation of Tapukanga management structure and, and, and further down was, was shaping itself to be more focused on the campus world. You know, a lot of the senior leaders and strategists were all from the polytech sector. Um, I think there was one deputy chief executive that was from the work based learning. So there was a, a, a big lean to becoming that giant polytech that was forecast. Um, and I was within that working with the BCITO and in that formation and and decided that that wasn't where I wanted to end up. To Pukenga, uh, with regards to construction training or carpentry in particular, was going to end up with over 99.5% of share of delivery. And, you know, in any sector, in any market in the world, that does not lead to innovation, good service, and and a focus on the, the the employers and the learners that is really deserved out there. So I took it upon myself and and working with Up Education, who are our parent company, to help help provide an alternative for employers to to go to. Employers in the past used to have an alternative. They had either what was the BCITO, a industry owned entity, or the Polytech system, which was a crown entity and had its uh, different pathway. So if an employer wasn't satisfied with the delivery they're getting from one, they could move to the other and have an alternative. And that evaporated when the BCITO and the Polytechs were merged together into Tapukanga. So, you know, with Up Education, we've, we've sort of formulated a, a new organisation, rebranded the only other provider that could do carpentry in the in the system. And that was GNH Training, now, now branded to Builders Academy with a focus in that carpentry area. And when we were forming the, the organisation to launch, we went out to various industry associations and talked to them about what we're doing and how we felt that we could offer them a, a good alternative, a alternative that wasn't a crown entity, wasn't steered by the government, that could be steered by the the industry. And that's where Master Builders' interest rose, is that they had the option to to become part of who we are and help uh, steer us in a, in a direction that that industry would like, you know. The Pukinga still had industry consultation, but it was still a crown entity, which is predominantly driven by government's whims of the day, whereas the Builders Academy can provide something that is driven primarily by industry's desire to, to have good training. That's a, a brief but in-depth description. No, it's, it's, it's useful because it's, I think, a complex and maybe somewhat confusing uh, environment for construction company owners out there at the moment who either have already have apprentices or would like to continue to do so or add more. Uh, so getting some clarification around options and market for them now is is powerful. What What's Builders Academy vision for construction training? The vision we've got is a clear pathway for someone entering the construction industry. Um, there are a few free trade providers out there. One of our sister companies, NZMA, um, does pre trade in Auckland. Um, but we're focusing from the apprenticeship sort of space onwards at the moment. So if you, you're into your apprenticeship and you, you spend your time doing learning your trade and learning about the industry, learning how to work safely within that area, and then sort of 
making a decision as you grow in that space as to what you want to do longer term. Um, and then we like to provide a pathway for, for those people with one provider. In the past, you did your apprenticeship with one provider, then have to move to another provider for a higher level qualification and, and even up to a university. So we wanted to provide a, a direction with one provider in that space. So post-apprenticeship, they can move into a level five supervisor qualification, which gives them the the people skills to either in a large larger organization, become a site foreman or leading hand, you know, working your way further up or in a smaller organization, it gives you the skills to build a great team and, and you know, build that culture that gets efficient and product efficiency and productivity up. And following on for that, for those that want to take a more professional career pathway, if they're in a larger organization, medium to large organization, they can move into diploma in quantity surveying and a diploma in construction management. So a couple of the professional qualifications. And we're aiming for all of this to be done whilst you're in employment and working towards that anyway. So the practical size is you're doing the job. And let's bring all the theory in behind it and, and uh, backfill you as you go through there. So, yeah, most of your learning is going to be done on site. Um, it's going to be done problem solving in your your organization. And then and then we bring in the qualifications through. And, you know, as you work through that pathway, you're taking a piece of each qualification with you to the next. So there are chunks of learning that you don't have to do again in those next levels because you've already done it and, and your experience on site provides you with a lot of that knowledge anyway. And then there's another pathway that we're wanting to forge with uh, registered master builders, and that is around those that want to become a contractor or an entrepreneur. So there's an opportunity there to post apprenticeship or post supervisor qualification to do a, a bit of a sideways loop. Um, we're not sure whether this is going to be just chunks of learning or actual qualifications, but it, I think it's going to be vital for those that want to move into that space. So it's going to be focused around running a small business and understanding some of the key disciplines that you're going to need around, you know, understanding your cash flow, a business plan, understanding quoting and back costing to see if you're making any money. You know, some of those basic things, understanding around the, the tax and what's going to be coming with that tax and ACC and all that sort of stuff and preparing yourself. So when you do get those bills, they are expected. They're not from out of the blue and then you have to sell your boat and your ute to, to pay your tax bill. And that gives them some, some knowledge and an expectation of what's ahead of them, still going to learn a lot as they go because running a business, you know, things are thrown from left field all the time. But at least they know they've got those little bits and pieces so the basics are there. They've got an understanding about making money so they're not going to go out there in theory and undercut everyone just to, to get a job. So they've still an under, they've got to understand that they've got to make money and, you know, and, and avoid some of those a school of hard knocks that the traditional entrepreneurs have had to endure in the construction industry in New Zealand. So you're, you're a great hands-on tools practitioner, but running a business is a completely different different, enti- uh, different entity, different set of rules, different expectations. Yeah, so hopefully sure we can pre we can preload some of that. So that those that move into that contractor entrepreneur space have got more chance of being a sustainable business for longer, which I think any industry association will be be happy to have because it's very hard to input that knowledge once you're in a business and running a business because you're head down bum up trying to keep your your contract on time your customers happy your materials arriving the council happy you know so there's so many other things that distract you that you know it's when the the, the school of hard knocks can slap you uh, so that's um that's the vision we're wanting to bring together within the next few years that, that there's those pathways that, uh, that are clear with one provider, you know, hopefully, you know, with one coach and mentor a lot of that way. Nice, Glenn. I, I like that uh, that continuity of learning and so many options for people as they progress their career in different directions they can go. It sounds really powerful. Yeah. If we were to hone in on the pure yeah. apprenticeship aspect of what you deliver, yeah. give us some insight and, and, and maybe the context is there might be some people listening that haven't had an apprentice for a very long time, very out of touch with how an apprentice yeah. learns now and what the role of the consumer construction company and the role of someone like Builders Academy is. Can you give us some insight into what that learning looks like now? Our philosophy is that the the best learning is done, you could say, where the best learning happens. So most of that is on the on site with your employer, with your supervisor, with your leading hand, because construction is it's mostly about solving problems on a daily basis. Um, you know, there's, that's, that's the majority of a, a, a Qualified carpenter's job is, is you know reading the plans and going oh gosh they've had another 
architect's dream is a builder's nightmare. So how do I apply this? And you know, solving those issues. So we 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 feel apprentices being alongside the people that are on site doing that will help them grow quicker and and understand more of the legislation and design requirements that are in a building environment. So they're they're doing the basics practically, working away, learn by building their base skills on how to, to be a good carpenter, but also absorbing what's happening around them. And then we come along and underlay underpin that with the theory that is the basic carpentry theory. The key thing to remember in all of this is that we're producing a competent carpenter, not a builder. Um, a builder is someone that is is a competent carpenter, but is also done a number of jobs from woe to go yeah we've got to make sure that people understand they've got to remember what was I like when I came out of my apprenticeship was I a builder no I was a competent carpenter so the you know having really clear what the outcome of the program is and the Builders Academy coming along alongside and helping to input that theory. Um, we've got a n- number of ways we're going to be doing that. One is self-based learning with, with the learning material that we provide. Uh, there are a number of people that can do that. You've got to remember at the moment, the average age of my apprentice is about 27. So they bring a level of maturity along with them at the moment and, and self-based learning does work. And then there's uh, night classes where we facilitate discipline time more than anything. Um, those 27-year-olds, 40, 40% of them have dependents nowadays or family. So going home and trying to focus on your theory is very challenging. So we, we provide space where they can come and um, we're there along with their colleagues or, or fellow apprentices and learn together and focus in that space. And we're also developing online tutorials at the moment to focus on the, the harder and more difficult components of the, the theory being you know, building science, building maths, legislation and bits and pieces like that some of the fundamental basics that uh, have to that underpin a, a builder's career further on so and the site visits that we do or the the, the assessment uh, visits we come every six weeks the feedback we're getting on that is that it's providing a apprentice more motivation to to focus on their learning because they know that we're going to be turning up sooner rather than later. Other providers come every three or four months. So, you know, yes, it takes it takes time to build skill and it can take three to four months. But in that time, you can lose focus, you can get distracted, you know, and, and other things coming in. But knowing that we're coming along every six weeks, it gives them a more of a focused, more, I've got to get onto it and prepare myself for the, for the next visit. And yeah, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean more time on site for the the Builders Academy. Um, we're coming along and and assessing smaller chunks of learning and and coaching and mentoring in smaller chunks. So because we're coming more often, and therefore the site visits aren't as long because you're not trying to process three or four months of learning and skill development. So we're we're sort of in and out and and do our job without any major impact to the the site. And this process that we got now is allowing us more time to actually say, and how are you, to the apprentice or the employer. So the, the pastoral care side of what we do is we've got more time for that now. So we've come in, we've, we've done the, the six weeks worth of learning, the, the goals, and set set future goals, but now we can, we've got more time to sort of focus on the apprentice and say, hey, well, how are you getting on? What barriers are in your way? How can we help? And and that certainly seems to be uh, helping things in, in the the, the progress of those apprentices as well. England, you refer to an assessment when the advisor comes to the site. Can you give us yeah. an example of what they would be assessing and kind of how that how that is done? Is it a discussion or is it literally, can you go and build me a, yeah. an A-frame and, and tell me where it should yep. be nailed? So the, the qualification is made up of a, a number of components and, and these are called standards or unit standards. And what we come along is, is can, we can either come along if there's been a focus in one particular area and, and assess a whole standard, or we can come along and assess pieces of all the standards because a, a carpentry apprentice is not going to be doing one thing every day the same and um, sometimes on a big commercial job they may do where they end up hanging 400 dollars in a couple of months but in a lot of residential jobs it's a little bits here and a little bits there and and they they, they all add up to a, a skill set being developed as they go so it's coming along understanding what they've done what they've been doing what what they focused on in their learning of the theory and then you know pulling them all together and the assessment is a combination of things yes there's some written work because you know the the powers that be in the moderation world where they they want to check that we're gathering the right evidence want to see a little bit of work that the apprentices are doing but for us the most powerful tool is walking around the site with the apprentice and having a professional conversation where they are talking about what they've done and and what they've how they've done it and why 
and why they've done it a certain way. So pull all of those together and it comes out of the apprentice's mouth. You can't deny that they know what they're doing. They haven't just transferred one piece of black and white to another piece of black and white. It's it's processed in their mind. They're, they're communicating it. They're using the right terminology. They're focused on health and safety. They're focused on the, the, the standard of how to do it. And over time, those will become a, a competent carpenter and be able to do those tasks in a commercial time frame. So it's, it's yeah, just focusing a little chunks and, and just acknowledging the efforts and those little chunks that do make up the, the whole qualification. And how are you bringing the voice of industry into the training to make sure that the training you're delivering fits with what industry is looking for? Yes. So that's where our relationship with master builders and the joint venture that we've got is, is vitally important to us. It gives us a, a strategic direction. And master builders have got two two members of their exec on their, their their board, on our board. So we've got two board members. So they're giving us the strategic direction as an education organisation working alongside a, a construction association. So they're saying, hey, the future's looking like this or we've had feedback that we need to do this. So we're getting from the horse's mouth, you could say, and and, and at a board level, not just a advisory group level. So it's, it's a proper, a really business approach to it. It gives our master builders more influence on Builders Academy strategic directions, our business planning, where we focus our energies with regards to training. And, and then the development of how we go about that and what we'll, we'll gives us a sounding board as well. Hey, we're thinking of this. Will it work? And RMB can come back and say yes and no. It enables us to tap into some of their, their groups, like their residential working group and their, their commercial working group to, to really understand, you know, some of the challenges that are in those spaces for them with regards to skill development. Um, it gives them direct feedback on Builders Academy service and uh, sponsors of the industry. So, Again, if we're not delivering what we said we're going to deliver and and, and there's an opportunity there to feed back directly into our board level. Um, so you, you, you don't get ignored when you, you've got that level of influence. Yeah, you know, we receive a pool of industry experts to help us develop a service promise, how we go about do, working with both employers and apprentices on site. And we're, we're putting together groups of actual employers and apprentices so we're getting direct feedback from from all levels so the apprentice the employer the trainer and the association so we're we're sort of making sure that we we cover all bases okay and can someone start an apprenticeship before they have a job with a construction company can they start doing training with you prior not directly. So, you know, part of the rules around the New Zealand Apprenticeship Scheme, which is uh, funded by Tertiary Education Commission, is that the, the learner must be in an employment relationship with with an employer who's going to train them in that space. So it is imperative to enter into that agreement that, that they are employed. But, you know, we get people that have been employed for two or three years who then sign into an, a, a a qualification, um, they don't start from point A, they may start from point D because they've had three years experience. We come along, we acknowledge that, we understand where they're at and that we award, award the um, the knowledge that they do have. We don't make them relearn things. So mm-hmm. it does, yeah, all that experience does count towards your qualification. And I know in previous conversations with the former chief executive, David Kelly, he was always referring to this challenge that the uh, building industry faces where as economic cycles change we you know in times where maybe it's not quite so buoyant uh, we highly staff we highly apprentices we stop we stop the training and then of course things ramp up again and then we don't have the skilled labor needed to to execute what needs to be done i know we're in you know generally we're in a slightly softer market condition now than maybe we've seen seen previously what would be your advice to construction companies that are you know maybe pondering about getting an apprentice but are also a bit hesitant it in with maybe the sales pipeline how would you have them think about that decision at the moment it's it's never too early to train i think because uh, like you say you've got to you've got to have your skill base right for take opportunities that, that come f- for you in the, in a recovering economy yes the economy has slowed down a little bit consents have dropped but they've dropped from a, a record high of 50 odd thousand down to around 34 35 thousand now which is not far below what we believe is industry capacity of about 38 to 40 thousand so mm-hmm. we're probably a little soft but we're not far off what is the industry capacity when they were doing 50 thousand industry was creaking creaking and groaning and not coping. So it, it it is a better training environment when there's a little bit of space to focus on your people. Um, so I think they should continue with that. The government is still doing its boost incentive, which is $500 a month per apprentice 
um, incentive that helps you know, through those times, and that's what it's there for. It's there to help employers wear a bit of that margin loss that an apprentice gives you. So I think that they should continue to focus on training. You know, all the, the a lot of the economic boffins are saying that we've sort of reached the bottom and, and it sort of looks fairly positive going forward. There is still demand there when you look at the the wider infrastructure and construction and industry. Wahanga Rail produces some some great data in their work in progress data and that's yeah, that's that's looking, you know, fairly steady for the next few years. So, you know, when you combine a a organize you know, in my mind, this shows the importance of having that that learning around running a business before you enter into a business because yeah, you understand how your business works a lot better rather than going into panic mode and and and, and dropping everything or running off and, <laughs> and 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 not focusing on what you need to do. So, but, so it is economics, but you know, I think there's never a time that you shouldn't be training your staff because if you think about a, a job site, there's a pile of materials and a plan and and what what labour unit puts that plan together and creates those materials into a building it's it, it's that human being that uh, that people need and rely on and, and need to be skilled so mm-hmm. the humans are an important component they certainly are and a concept that's become somewhat popular is the idea of the reverse mentor which is where people that have been in career a long time are actively engaging with younger people because they just bring a different perspective uh, a lot of our uh, people coming through to apprenticeships now are tech natives. They've been surrounded by technology. They don't remember a time when there was no cell phones and no internet. They've never never known that. And yep. the ability to help bring those kind of ideas into our construction businesses and help us grow forward by use of technology and different approaches is really powerful. So it's not just about, I think, adding another set of hands on site. It's about yep. also adding a different perspective and some different skill sets that yep. might be able to help in a different way also. And some knowledge. And you talk about that reverse mentor. Um, we were having a conversation just the other day in the office around that sort of scenario where there are so many apps that are available nowadays for help people work out, you know, trusses and rafters and angles and, and, and all that sort of stuff. You still need the basic understanding of how that works, the, the mathematical formulas, because if if you input something slightly wrong into that data, a bad data in, bad data out, and if you don't pick that up, that doesn't look right and, and go ahead and make it, you're in for a bit of a problem there. So there's got to be still a bit of that base theory knowledge around Pythagoras and what have you. So when you, you input it and it comes up with a, a number, you go, oh, yeah, that looks right. Or, oh, no, that doesn't look quite right. I better check it sort of scenario. Yeah, so there's still a, a, a bit of friction between the two there. It's, it's great to, to observe on site. Yeah. It is, and I guess that's the power of a team on site where you're bringing yeah. different levels of skill, different levels of experience, different knowledge sets and bringing together in a team and you know the uh, sum of the team is greater than its parts. Kind of oh, way. yeah, because it's still possible to put the wrong data on the back of that 4 or 2 that you're writing on, sir. <laughs> Indeed. Glenn, if you were to uh, look out as far as 2030, so another kind of five, six years' time, what would you love Builders Academy to have achieved by that that time? For me, it's that, that vision of that, that rear pathway and to have adapted and developed that. You know, you talk about the digital influence. You know, a lot of inspections and consents are going to be digital in the near future. So how do we incorporate that into our, our learnings, prepare people for that sort of world? So, you know, it's, it's having those key qualifications supplemented by the digital world and then um, ensuring that um, the construction industry does actually become more productive. You know, this this just about every industry in New Zealand is behind in the productivity um, world. Um, and, and how do we bring training in to, to help lift that. I was in a conversation about a month ago where they were talking about construction waste and how to recycle, repurpose, reuse. And the question I had in that conversation was how much of that waste that's in those bins shouldn't be there in the first place? So how much is it caused by rework or human error? And how do we how do we reduce that flow into that bin by training people better and getting them to understand and using the techniques, using digital and things like that? So it's yeah, you know, it's not just about processing that waste in the right way; it's reducing it all round by having mm. the whole site working efficiently from day one, yep. sort of thing. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, you, know, you can you can do things in isolation, but you know, a a the education provider can help that vision across the whole whole gambit, I suppose, and making sure that. Uh, this wee problem that the employer, employer of the industry is facing it does have a solution more than, than just the, the back end, you could say. 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you, Glenn. That's been really uh, informative to help us understand what's happening in the training uh, space. It's wonderful to see the collaboration, joint venture between registered master builders and, and Builders Academy. I think those bring those two organisations with their different uh, superpowers together. It seems like a powerful combination. And some of the yeah. And thanks for explaining uh, some of the landscape of what's going on in training our apprentices and the construction sector. Now has been been helpful. Any final thoughts you'd like to share with the audience? We yeah, the most important thing, I suppose, is having a conversation about what we do and what we can do. If if they if people aren't happy with their current situation in regards to training, by all means, get hold of us on our eight hundred number, oh eight hundred eight seven six four six six four, or jump on our website, buildersacademy.org.nz, and there's a link through to there. We're more than happy to come and talk about how we go about what we do, what we and why, and and how can we um, build a relationship with with the industry. And we're moving forward. We're really keen to, to get alongside employers and their apprentices. All right. Thanks, Glenn. Appreciate that. And thanks for joining us on the Master Builders Elevate podcast today. Thank you, Ryan. Thanks for having me.